Oh gosh. I love this question. Designing my dream Passover Asian Seder. Holy cow. Oh, okay. Thank goodness we can eat rice. If we're gonna be doing a dream Asian Passover Seder, then I'm gonna be bringing a lot of food that I know from my dad's side of the family. So I would probably be bringing bakhsh, which is like a Baharian dish. It's rice and chicken and a ton of herbs, but like every family makes it a little different. I mean, everyone does their own Seder plate however they wanna do it. That table for potluck, okay. Obviously you gotta have like an array of fried rice. Kimchi fried rice, because I love kimchi fried rice even though I probably wouldn't be able to eat that on Passover. I'm also thinking very rice-centric, like a lot of rice. White rice, fried rice. Definitely gefilte fish, because that's my favorite food, even though it's kind of gross. Gefilte fish could definitely be improved upon using a lot of Asian-centric fish sauces. There's some great Thai fish cakes, and I think those could perhaps help rehabilitate the reputation of gefilte fish. Even though I think normal gefilte fish is fine. It's good. I would choose one from each part of my family. For my Indonesian, I would go with the quintessential nasi girl. It's just an Indonesian style fried rice. Very delicious, very easy to make. Growing up, even though my dad's side of the family is Ashkenazi Jewish, for my mom, our way of getting through Passover was just eating rice the same way we would always eat rice. Maybe we skipped Jesse that week. I'm a terrible cook, but with some time and practice, I would bring from my dad's side, so Jewish side, my Nana's noodle kugel that she made without cinnamon. So it was like a savory noodle kugel, which everyone always thought was like very strange, but actually I found it delicious. I'm not really a sweets person. The symbolism of the like original Seder plate still holds a lot of significance to me in my life and I value them as yearly important reminders of Passover. But if I could bring in my own Asian Passover twist, I would change the um, hard boiled eggs to chaya then, which is like a Chinese tea egg because I just think they're way more delicious. You have to like crack the shells before you boil them so that the tea can actually like seep into the egg. And it kind of looks like a mosaic egg egg that feels representative of like little fragments of culture that I've been able to absorb throughout my life and that I've left a lasting print on me. That was beautiful and awesome. I always thought that the perfect crossover Jewish Asian food that I would bring for Seder would be good, but it's like just perfect for Yom Tov or Shabbat um, would be kalbi chim, which is a Korean slow braised beef stew, which to me is basically Asian cholent and just kind of matches perfectly. The beef with potatoes, carrots, onions, and it has kind of like a sweet sweet soy sort of flavor. There's the national dish of Malaysia, which is nasi lemak, which is usually a beef rendang. So if I was thinking of like beef brisket, it's almost the same cut of meat, but it's in this sauce that's like coconut milk and spices, lemongrass. It's really deeply savory and delicious. My personal highlight about this potential potluck style Passover Seder would just be the cooking, working in the kitchen with either side of our family and just making something together that we could all enjoy. I grew up with my Jewish grandmother kicking everyone out of the kitchen right before Passover and not allowing us to see what she was doing. It's only until recent years when she started to slow down that she's let other people into the kitchen. One of the foods that I ended up growing up with was banana taran, which are Filipino banana lumpia. One of my earliest memories is sitting at the table, rolling them with my mom and sneaking bites of banana in between. If I was going to a Seder, I would bring those. And then I would also probably bring Tupperware containers to take food home because I've been trained very well by my parents. I also would love to do traditional recipes like my grandmother's roast chicken and this one recipe that's been in my family for hundreds of years, which is cabbage in a sweet and sour tomato sauce with braised short ribs served over rice with marrow bones and it like cooks all together in a one pot and it's just one of my like most favorite favorite things to make earlier i was telling my mom that we were going to do this um call i always make this soup and she's made it before but i add matzo balls to mine to fuse jewish and filipino food together but i can't say the name of it and she was laughing so hard about how I was saying it. I might be saying it wrong. Sotagon, sotagon was like with vermicelli and it's, it's so, so good. And I just add matzo balls. I always associate like matzo balls with like being with my Jewish family. We'd always eat like whenever we were together. When I think of a table and everyone gathering, I think of like big pots of soup. My mom makes 
really good matzo ball soup and I feel like that was like the biggest memory I have of like growing up. From family side, I think it would be dal, which is lentils and can come in so many different variations. Each family has their own recipe and they all taste so different. Kind of symbolizes different people and guests that you might have at your table. Passover seders and other like, you know, just community events where everyone's gathering and sharing food. I think it's one of the most beautiful things. So I didn't grow up with a huge understanding of what made up the components of a Passover meal. And now that I host my own Passover seders. I generally have just been cooking more traditional Ashkenazi Jewish stuff, although I've been in recent years incorporating some Sephardic traditions as well. Both sides of my family are very disconnected from the land, and my Chinese grandmother uh, used to like grow her own vegetables, super knowledgeable about Chinese herbs and plants and medicines, and she passed away recently, and I'm just trying to learn all these like ancient medicine from my aunt who's the only one who still has this knowledge. Uh, Passover is a holiday all about roots. It's about where we come from, and it's about telling a story through food. A big part about Judaism is where food comes from, and that's why we have 10 different brachot for food <laughs> based on where it comes from on the land. If I were to be selfish, I would ask for more vegetarian vegan options because that is my personal lifestyle, but I think overall a seder that is more mindful of the land and where we come from. Food definitely allows me to feel deeply connected to like my cultural identities. So so much of the celebrations that I've had in my life are about the gathering around food. I have a Seder plate with an orange, uh, which symbolizes the more progressive feminist ideology that women can be rabbis. There is that saying, a woman as a rabbi is as nuts as an orange on the Seder plate. And then it's like, let's add it. Love for this potential Passover to happen. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hey, y'all. How are you, you doing? Jinx. <laughs> I very much think I need to uh, replan my Seder plate next year just after hearing <laughs> all the uh, tasty suggestions. Our cast's creativity is endless, y'all. Mm -hmm. I know. So, you've reached the end of Lunar, the series, season one. We're here today as a team to just kind of chill and talk a little bit about the impact that this has had on us. As some of you might know, we filmed Lunar, the entire footage back in October, 2020. So since then, a lot of stuff has happened in both the Asian American, Asian and Jewish communities. Our communities have suffered a lot of pain and anger over the hatred that has come out of this country that has been deeply ingrained in society for decades and centuries. And we've come out more resilient and stronger, but we're working through it. And so in the spirit of Passover, which we're coming up to an end of, we wanted to share how has working on Lunar made each of us feel more liberated and be more liberated. In the society with so much systemic oppression and injustice against our communities, how do we find groundedness and liberation and joy in the context of this project? Liberation to me means get to live your life as who you are. For me, it's been a long time coming. First, I came out as LGBT, never got to legally get married until, you know, not too long ago. And now the Asian Jewish Film Project really opened my eyes to all these different Asian Jews. It's almost like two kinds of liberation. There's sort of the community uh, liberation where a group of people are struggling somehow and they need to be liberated from their situation. But then there's also the sort of individual liberation and that sort of very personal form of liberation in the sense of you need to be, you know, liberated from feeling alone or being without community or just liberation from your own preconceived notions about something. One thing we probably all said to a certain degree and most of our cast has said is that coming to Lunar was the first time they met this many Asian Jews. And I think there's something that I didn't even realize until we're actually talking about it now is that coming together like this is a form of liberation and that the other Asian Jews I knew was pretty much Jenny and uh, my two younger brothers, but there's a lot more of us. Even that one time we got together for Shabbat right after Atlanta, just seeing 40 something faces of people who looked like me, who felt similar to me, who was struggling to balance the sense of like, I'm Asian, I'm Jewish, how do I make sense of this moment? We all wanted to come together to be with each other, to comfort, to heal, and to act in solidarity. And that's the most powerful thing about this for me in terms of liberation, is being liberated from that sense of isolation. 
that a lot of Asian Jews, but also just like lots of Jews of color experience thinking we're the only ones, but no, we're not the only ones. We are here to make waves and we're not going to stay silent and we're not going to make white supremacy make us think that our stories don't matter and that we don't matter. Having this community has liberated me so much from honestly my own internalized feelings of like internalized racism and just like this feeling that I was inherently other. Everything that society was putting on me for being different. Working on this project and connecting with others has really helped me to invert that and be able to define for ourselves who are we, what do we as a community stand for. Being in community together feels like a giant like global hug, which I didn't know I needed until I had this. Also, it's just so timely starting Lunar in 2020 during a year of such devastation for both our Jewish and Asian American communities has really helped me so much. We refuse to be invisible. That's very important in the Asian community. This is the power of bias for us. We're taking our power back and we're telling our own stories and we're choosing to share that. What I really live for is those little moments that every other day we get like a comment or a DM on our Instagram account and someone's like, oh my God, I'm an Asian Jew. I just found you. I love this. And it's just like how many Asian Jews are going to see this and feel seen, heard, and understood. To use the words of our wonderful cast member, Alicia. Yeah, there's a lot of trust that the cast has put into us. Their boldness or even just urgency to share their own thoughts and stories and experiences, it expands past them to us. Every time we were in a Kabbalah Shabbat or in the Shabbat or Passover together, I always say, oh, I've never seen so many Asian Jews together in one room. For me, it has been such a long journey. For 20 some years, I feel like I was the only one. And now there's a whole room full of them. It's just amazing. So that's a wrap on Lunar Season 1. I'm so proud of everything we've done, and this is definitely not the end of our content and things we're working on. So follow us on social media and sign up for our email list if you'd like to be updated with what we're working on. If you like what you see and you benefited from learning from the wisdom of our cast members in our many videos, we encourage you to make a donation to us to support the valuable work of our Asian American Jewish creatives. The donation link is globaljews.org slash lunar. And when you donate, please make sure to indicate lunar in the in on our field. Thank you all, and we'll see you soon.